small blind versus big blind. You're going to see it get folded to the spot a lot. Fedor, 5.2 million. Go. 240. Raising Eight. chips into Victor Kudanov. I'd be scared of raising into Kudanov. We know he's capable of many things. 10 9 officer, definitely going to be a defense. Got position. Guy's going to try to pick on you. King Queen Deuce doesn't hit either holding in terms of a pair, but Kudinov does pick up the gut shot straight draw. So he actually checks as the pre-flop raiser. Kudinov wondering, hmm, didn't see about this king, queen, deuce. Interesting. Take a free one off. There's the king. Seems like a good spot to start stabbing. Fader holds. You raise six high. Yep. Mind if I take one of your opponent no, showing no, weakness on this yeah. flop. Yeah. Not too much has changed on a turn. One seventy five. One seventy five. Just enough to just fold out some random hands. Now Victor here is gonna be thinking, am I getting delayed C bet? Off enough? Wow. Calls <laughs> with ten nine high. I mean obviously he does have the draw to the straight, but this is equal parts. Well Kudinov called with kinda of nothing there, but guess what Fedor has? Less than nothing. Is it possible? It's a I negative. Guess science is not proven negatives to exist in the real world, only in the math world, Jonathan. It's an, but this is this is your first. In Fedor the has antimatter in his hand. That's how bad his hand See? is. I guess they have proven it. It's a six and a four, honey. You called me with a six <laughs> and a four. No, he didn't. He bet with the six yeah, and did. four. I called him with a ten you and a nine. Call me with a nine and a ten, honey. <laughs> Doing Helmuth. Yeah, everyone knows. Everybody loves it. Uh, all right. So let's go back to the flop real quick. Fader checking feels like this must be a balance thing. Like I have to have some give ups here. Otherwise against the 30 K six max players, I am going to be exploited. Right. Because this feels like a board that you really want. You like you, your soul begs you to bet six high and try to end the thing when you have a range advantage against the 22 blind stack. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. But I'm, Fedor decides to check. Mm. And the only thing we came up with is that it's because I have to have some check give ups. I have no heart blockers. I don't have really any good backdoor draws. This could be one of those. And to be clear, when Grant says heart blockers, that means we'd be blocking um, the hearts that our opponent could have, which means that's more continues. If, if we have hearts in our hands, they're less likely to have some continues. No, I was talking about a medicine heart blockers. <laughs> <laughs> it kills you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a way to die. Yeah. Um, so that's what we got for Fedor checking. I think that's probably fine against these fields to have some check give ups. Yeah, it's like surprising because the board seems so good for him, but I, 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 it seems like he's got to have reasonable frequencies. And Gudinov checking back is likely about his fear that Fedor is going to have a lot of check calls or even check raises at this stack depth on this board. I mean, you see the power. If Fedor is balanced and is checking here, he's going to have a lot of hands he's not folding, and so Kudinov can't just steal right now. Yeah, even though he does have a gut shot, it's not like a great gut shot, and it's on a too hard board. It's not. It's not ideal. I mean, I would assume Fader is almost always calling when he checks here. Like at a lot of other levels, that's true, right? Like they have a queen and they're checking. That's I imagine that. that's not what's happening here. Right. But instead, we get to go to the turn. Yep. Which pairs the king. Fader now decides. Okay, I have to try to win with six high now that the guy checked back. I can't let him like just check down seven eight, you right. know, and and somehow win. Right. That's not fair to me and my life. <laughs> <laughs> so Fader goes with a very small bet, 175. Would you size it like this? No. Um, I would have sized it bigger. I would have sized this preflop raise bigger, too. I think it's really interesting he goes 240. We actually get into it in our podcast about why he might be doing that, and that was a cool conversation to have. Um, on the turn, almost always, the top players size up, even if they haven't bet the flop. So they usually bet at least 70 80% of the pot these days, um, especially on wetter boards. It's really interesting to me he goes small. 
what we get by I mean, he probably thinks Kudinov just has a lot of insta folds. Yeah. So he doesn't need to size it up. Um that Kudinov maybe is betting like his gutters and stuff like that right away. And so, you know, yep. here we are. Like Kudinov never has ace ten, right? He just would have re raised all in pre. Yeah. So his gutters are hands like ten nine exactly and jack nine. Yep. And you know, if he has a queen, he's gonna call any size. So right. it it we save money this way. I mean, this bet must print money. I know you yeah, like it just must, but the price that he's giving himself here. Yeah, no, this, this, and actually as I'm saying all this, so now if all the, if the only difference between this and betting say 400,000 is we fall out Jack nine and 10, nine. Yeah. Then we should bet 175. Right. right. So maybe fetters all over this. And then I've just convinced myself this is a better bet. And Kudinov does call with one of those hands, but should he, I mean, this is not an ideal spot for, for two unders and a gut shot. I would have folded for sure. This 175 would have worked against even my jack nines and ten nines for sure because the board is paired. What is the plan? We, we're running out of chips over here. Why can't we just move on to the next hand? We, we missed. Can All right. We well, here's, here's the plan. Now, okay. we're not getting a good enough price to draw to a jack, which is almost always good. For sure we're not. Um, but maybe we're getting a good enough price to see if Fader was just taking a shot on the turn, and we can bet whenever Fader checks the river. Yeah. Like I said, this money for Fa this this bet for Fader probably prints money. It means he doesn't necessarily have to follow it up with another bluff. Right. Right. That's so a good if, point. So if he has a weak hand and he's just trying to steal with like I just got to try here, then Kudinov gets to be in position and see if Fader tries again, and he can say, Oh well, you didn't try again, so I guess I get to win the pot now. And I do have a few miracle cards, even if you have some value, although not nutted cards, but still. We're going to be very happy if we hit a jack as Kudinov and yeah. hopefully get a lot of chips in there and hopefully win. Yeah, I imagine um, that's the plan. Yeah, I think I think the size of this as well as position as well as the belief that like we're firing at all on all checks on all check rivers that aren't tens and nines anyway. Um, fair enough. Fair enough is not even going to be in your vocabulary on Nitro Betting because it's more than fair. You're going to say that every time they offer you a special promotion from the Poker Guys link in the pin tweet, you're going to be like, you know what? That is more than fair yet again. I can't believe it. I'm like at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory without all, without all the death and stuff. Yeah, without the child murder. Yeah, yeah, none of the death. <laughs> we got Wonka's Factory without the death. Come on. Come one all. Come one all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Nitro Betting. Nitro Betting. We'll see you there. <laughs> face another barrel on the river as the ace comes off okay so I think Fedor is likely going to put Victor Kudinov on a queen a lot to be able to check back that flop call a turn bet he would expect a lot of ace x to reshove on his open pre-flop with the 20 big line stack you would expect pocket pairs to reshove pre-flop. So most likely Fedor thinks that Viktor Kudinov has a queen. The question is, does he Wait, think maybe? that hand would fold? And he's betting this kind of size that looks very milky. It does look credible yeah. for an ace. Sure does. And I think this may be the end of the road for Kudinov with the 10 high. Man, this is some power poker. He got it in him to make a play trying to represent the king. You know, it'd be even sexier than making a play is flatting with 10 high. You know that, right? <laughs> flatting with 10 high would literally be the sexiest thing I've seen in a Triton so far. And we've seen some very sexy plays. Yeah. Oh my God, he's going to the time bank. No Randy. way. Oh my God, is he going to do it? No way. 10 9 high. Battling the 6 high. Going. Potentially a call. You see, something doesn't add up for Rodin, uh, for Kudinov here. Yeah, something. There's, a, right. there's an odor in the air here. So you checking that flop of the king? I don't believe it. You bang that small of a king on a turn. Oh my God! Did he just call with ten high? Wow! Show everyone this ten nine high is sick. Sick. Oh sick. my sick. goodness. Keep nodding your head, Fedor. That is unbelievable. I'll tell you what. If there's no one thing rolling. that could have happened mm -hmm. no that would really gut punch Fedor and make him rethink what... Woo-wee! He really did it. He, I, don't, I don't know how this happened. He really made the call with 10 high. He's trying to be Stu Unger over here with he's, his 10, 10 high call. He did it. He's Stu Unger. Is he, though? No. We're going to talk about it. I'm let's, not sure. Let's start with Fedor, okay? Okay. The Ace of Clubs is an interesting and polarizing river. 
I certainly could see Fader playing an ace this way up until this point. He, yes. he could check an ace for pot control on the flop with the plan to check call. He gets the check check. The turn pairs the king, and he's like, well, I got to deny some equity now, so I'll bet the 175 and fold out all the random stuff that can pair up on the river. That, that all makes tons of sense. Yep. And then Fader chooses a size that's really saying, I have an ace and I want you to have a queen. He's telling a really good story for having an ace here when he bets 390 and a 930. It's hard not to believe it. I think Fader's mostly checking his queens because they're essentially all chopping. Yeah. Right? Um, in fact, they are all chopping if they're just a queen. Um, so he's probably checking those and giving Kudinov a chance to bluff, but an ace just has to bet. Right? An ace, an ace makes perfect sense to bet. And the size is... Oh, a siren call to I have it. Yeah. It's not trying to blow him off the hand. It's not a polarizing size. I don't really, I, I like, I like the size by Federer. I believe it. I think it's very, it's going to put a queen in sort of the meat grinder. I would have assumed anyway, maybe not at all, but I would have thought that And anything worse than a queen, like a deuce just has to fold. I don't know what else there even is. There aren't any pocket pairs out here. Yeah. So I think, I think the bet is intended to, to rep an ace, and I don't see how it's not repping an ace, yeah. right? Like, I know Fader is not always going to have an ace. Of course, he's going to have some bluffs. But if you're sitting there with 10 high, is this a good time to call? I mean, like I, like I was saying on the podcast, uh, when I saw that this guy called Fader with 10 high, I thought, oh, there must be, like, a really awesome 10 high call that has a lot of reason behind it. But we tried and tried on our podcast to find a good reason to call with 10 high here, and we could not find one other than – He's got a physical tell on Fedor, or Fedor is wildly unbalanced towards bluffs here for a reason that we can't see. Yeah, it all seems kind of hard to believe. And you know, here's another problem. The best bluffing hand that Fedor could have, if, we, if we're sitting here with 10-9 and thinking Fedor's bluffing, is a hand with a 10 or a 9, uh, sorry, a jack or a 10 in it, and um, no hearts, Yeah. right? Um, so jack high no hearts, like just sitting there, right? So that's not great yeah by the way fader could have played jack 10 like this sometimes too where he's check raising on the flop if we were to bet fader can have a so many different ways here he's not the fact that he bets small i mean look kudunov is right but that doesn't mean he's correct <laughs> yeah or the other way around he's correct but it doesn't mean this is it's I, I don't think it's a good call either i need to see kudunov make this play a lot more before i was starting to believe that there was something really going on here like i've seen enough davidi katai miracle calls where he doesn't do it every time, but I've seen him call with queen high correctly multiple times, right? Like in big spots that he's like really putting stuff together in a way most people don't and willing to put the chips in. I need to see Kudinov do this a lot more before I'm convinced that this is a good call. I don't, I don't believe that it's a good call. Yeah. I don't have any reason for it to be a good call. I think it's a cool call on paper, but as an analyst of the hand, I think it's a, a technically bad call. I it, think it's incorrect. Me, and when we say that, what we really mean is we think we're losing money by making the call. We think we're not getting good enough price with 10 high to call here, right? But damn, it looks cool. Oh my gosh. So good. So yeah, that happened. You know, we're all richer for it, I assume. At least Kudinov is. Uh, what do you guys think about these plays? I personally thought better could have gone bigger in different spots. Pre-flop, on the turn. I thought it was interesting you didn't bet the flop. I feel like I understand why you ended up doing all those things. Uh, Kudinov, though. Hello. The call on the turn, and let's get to it. The call on the river. People, let us know what you think in the comments. Please do, and join our Discord where you can let us think about everything. We'll see you there.